didn't get enough of parkour and combat in the last episode of Dying to Know, neither did we. And that's why we are here. My name is Timon Smektawa, lead game designer. And I'm Cornel Askua, senior producer. Ready to learn more about parkour, combat and crafting in Dying Light 2? Stay with us. Okay, so let's get down to business. Is Dying Light to stay human more about combat or survival? Mm, it's not an easy answer. So player can go for tactics, stealth, uh, parkour, not only combat and survival. Uh, so the options are numerous and they can create or shape the environment uh, to their liking or in some situations even avoid the fights at all. Exactly. Dying Light 2 is such a broad and multifaceted game that everyone will find their own way of achieving things. But for sure, this is not a typical survival game where you manage food and resources and build shelters. No, it's not. But this is not completely off the table because we might think about it post-launch. But right now, there are so many options, it's really hard to pinpoint one thing that Dying Light 2 focuses on, right? It's hard, yes, but the best option is that you can combine those elements in the game. An example? Uh, we added many parkour skills and some of them are combat specific. Uh, the most interesting would be the ability to stagger an enemy and use his body to your advantage. So you can create a situation when you jump on a four, rebound from him and kick another one. Or when you finish the whole situations with the with situation with the powerful ground pound, and that's something that really changes the flow and feel of combat, especially that it's actually quite easy to pull off, even for the players that don't have much experience in action games. But how does it work exactly? Those complex uh, sequences are those like tricks, scripted animations, like in the extreme sport games. Exactly. Uh, no, no. Player can do mm, everything themselves, and with enough creativity, I believe all of the players will be able to master parkour in the game, and they will be able to create sequences that will wow uh, anyone watching. Can they, for example, land a paraglider with a roll, then do a wall run, then another wall run, then maybe use a grappling hook to swing to the next rooftop, then maybe a slide and a yes, double jump. and keep on going like that. So the whole system is designed to allow that. Thank you, because you said the magic word, systems. So now let's talk a little bit about our crafting system, because it did change a lot, right? Yes, it did. Right now we have two options for the players. Uh, one's modding weapon and the second one is creating items from scratch. Items like lockpicks, uh, potions... Grenades? Of course. Both ways benefit from the ability to be upgraded uh, through interactions with the Craftmasters. That's a new feature that we have added, so maybe let's explain a little bit about it. Craftmasters. Those guys, they give you those small tasks, uh, mini missions, usually focused on gathering resources. And when you complete them, they will upgrade your blueprints. So the items that are produced are more effective. Uh, did I forget anything? Uh, it's worth mentioning that most of the blueprints have nine levels. So there's some upgrading to do. Uh, some of them are simple statistics, uh, like more damage, uh, maybe more durability. Uh, but there are some that will add new experience to the game. Such as? Um, you can imagine a situation where you can stick uh, your explosive to the enemy body. Okay, this one. So this one I very much like. Yes, I agree. There, are, there is so much to try and explore that I'm sure players will have lots of fun with this. Uh, but our weapon modding system, it also got more advanced and more flexible. Uh, in the first game, it was more scripted. You were getting a blueprint and it allowed you to install only one specific blueprint on one specific weapon type. Right now, it's more flexible. It's different. So how exactly did it change? So we added a completely new layer uh, of complexity to the modding system. And right now, players can get up to three modification slots per weapon. Oh, wow. And they can use it uh, as they want in the game. So they can put each mod in any of the mod slots they like. So um, you can imagine the situations when we play the co-op together okay. uh, and we find the same base machete. Okay. And you're going to go for what? Damage? Uh, of course, for damage, and maybe adding electric discharges on hits. Okay. I will go with more handling, 
and maybe fire uh, area of effect. So at the very end, we're gonna get two different experiences from the same base machete. An amazing example. Thank you, Colonel. And I think you will agree that not only the crafting system, but also parkour and combat are flexible to allow any player to experience dying light to stay human however they like. Yes, of course. Thank you very much, Timon. Thank you for joining me. And now that you know even more about the features and mechanics of the game we have been working on since the very beginning, I hope you can't wait until December 7th as much as we do. Stay tuned and stay human.